on a farm among the hills. We've always lived here. My dad's family has owned the farm for generations. I can't imagine living anywhere else or wanting to see anything but these fields and these hills with all their changing colours. I live in a house of secrets. There are things going on that I don't understand. Changes that are happening that no one will talk to me about. Sometimes I feel as if I don't know my own family anymore. Dad, Mum, Martin, Marion. They've all got their secrets. Even Kathleen. She's my sister, but she's always been my friend too. But even she keeps things from me now. We used to share everything. Now she won't tell me anything. Hi, Kath. Where have you been? Oh, over the hills and far away. Actually, I've been getting Marion's birthday present. Oh, I got her some felt pens. I wish we had another horse. Why? Well, then I could have gone with you. Sometimes, I think you've got no imagination, Jeannie. Kathleen, have you got a boyfriend? You are, haven't you? Well, tell me who it is, then. <laughs> who is? <laughs> I'll go on. I'll tell Dad. Don't you dare, Janie, Tommy. Or I'll run away and I'll never come home again. And it'll be your fault. Giddy up. Why are you crying? Don't ask me, Janie. I can't make her out these days. One minute she's happy, and the next minute she's crying. It doesn't make sense. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I'm not selling your house. Whatever for? I'm moving. Where to, Grant? Don't be ridiculous. What's the point of moving? Oh, what about all your furniture? Oh, I've no need of that. Not where I'm going. Are you moving in with us then, Grant? <laughs> well, what do you want to sell your house for anyway? At your age. I need the money. Come on, Mum. Let Marion cut her cake. Yeah, can I cut it? It's my If you're short of money, you've only to ask, Mother. You should know that. I think we have a right to know why you're selling the house, Mum. And where you're thinking of going when you have sold it. I've made plans. I've kept them in my head for over 50 years. I'm not going to change my mind now. Well, if you're going to be all secretive about it, I'm off. I've better things to do outside. There's a sick you needs tending to in the old barn. I intend to go travelling. Travelling? <laughs> At your age? I would have thought there's more good reason to go travelling at my age than any other. Where do you think you'll go, Grant? A long way, Jeannie. But when I get there, I'm going to stay. Forever? But where? Maybe it'll be somewhere like... India. India? But you've never even been out of the country before, Mother. It's ten years since you last went to town. Exactly. Thanks for lovely tea, Pat. You gonna walk me home, Jeannie? See you, Grant. Bye, Grant. Grant. You're not really going away, are you? Yes, Jeannie. <laughs> I am. India. 
why India of all places? Land of poverty. Land of mystics. Are you? Not for me. Look what Martin's done. It's nice, Martin. Come on. Uh, bed for you. Oh, Mum, it's still my birthday. Now, now, Marion, your mother said. I'll take her up. Yes. Hi, Marion. Right. Mm. I'll tuck you up later. Mum, do you remember the slideshow the vicar gave us? I do. About the Himalayas? That's it. He told us about people who went out to India as doctors and nurses and teachers. Do you remember? He said we all had it in us to make that sort of sacrifice. What sort of sacrifice? The man's mad. You wait till I see him. Mr. Curry! Shame on you, Mr. Curry, for putting wild ideas into an old lady's head! She's told you I wanted to have a word with you. We won't hear of it! We're not going to let her go! I've made good provision for her. I've done exactly what she asked me to do. You must trust me, Mr. Tanner. Trust you! Expecting an old lady to make that sort of sacrifice! It's, it's the only sort of sacrifice the old can make. It makes up, don't you see, for being old. I won't have it! Marian. I don't want them. Go ahead, take a minute, Mum. For tonight's stew pot teller. Well, go on then. I hate that ferret. Oh, it's nothing to be scared of. I'm not scared of it. I hate it. I hate you when you're like that, killing rabbits with it. <laughs> you look just like Dad. Uh. I don't understand you. You can sit for hours drawing animals and birds and things, and the next minute go out and kill them. Just like that. You enjoy killing them, don't you? Hey, fox is even better. I've seen a fox snap a dog's jaw off as soon as look at him. I suppose you think that's fun, Martin Tanner. It's neither fun nor cruel. It's nature, that's all. Hi. Does me dad know you've been out looking like that? Looking like what? Like a city tart. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Where have you been? Grand. Isn't there anything we can do to stop her? Why? I don't want her to go. Well, that's not the point, is it? Why didn't all you have been hanging around here? There's work to do in the house, you know. And on the farm. We were just talking about Gran. I know very well what you were just doing. You were watching out for lads from those tents. That's what you were doing. I wasn't, Dad. Boy, mad, that's you. I've been watching you. Get off home and help your mother. And you can wipe that muck of your face, too! If I had my way, there wouldn't be tents in that field. There'd be sheep. That's what farmland's for. Should never have sold it, Dad. What else could I have done, Martin? You tell me. What else could I have done? Boy Baxter. Well, what did Boy Baxter do? Never you mind what Boy Baxter did. He's a bad farmer and a bad neighbour, and that's all you need to know. Well, why'd you hate him so much? I thought he had a good farm. What do you know about farming? See the beauty and check the top field for me. Done all I could. Keep this farm going. Got it looking grand again. It'll be yours one day, you know. When I'm good and ready, mine. Not before. <laughs> Why is Dad such a pig to cat? 
I don't understand. I do. He's scared of losing us. Us? He couldn't care less about us girls. He's scared of anything happening to White Peak Farm. Well, why should it? Well, it's everything to him, this farm. But why should anything happen to it? Is it something to do with Boy Baxter? Could be. Look, don't ask me about him. Why won't anyone tell me about the Baxters? It's something that happened a long time ago, when you were young. And I remember when I was a little girl, there used to be a little circus in town, down by the old tramsheds. Did you love going there, Gran? No. Funny. I always hated going into town, even then. Me too. Ah, well, you're like me, Jeannie. Kathleen's the city girl. I couldn't see what you hate about cities, Jeannie. I love going into town. That's all you do care about. That's what you'd end up being. A city tart! Painted fingernails and coloured hair. That's you! You're too hard on her, John. It's for her own good. She knows what I mean. Well, I'm going to ask Kathleen to make a trip into town for me. And you can go with her. Might as well warn you, I've no intention of sneaking away without a good send-off. I've never given a party before, but I want to have one, Marge, before I leave. The girls can get the food for me. Everyone will be invited. Not Boy Baxter's family. John, can I go with them, Bern? Oh, Marion. I was hoping you'd stay at home and help me with the packing. There might be one or two little presents to sort out as well. It's going to be a busy day for all of us. <laughs> what did I tell you? I bet she's got them tied with a bit of nylon thread. Oh, look at that. Wait, do you want anything or not, love? Yes, please, we'll take the lot. The lot? <laughs> I think I'm allergic to crab meat. But you haven't tasted it yet. I can't stand crab meat myself. Makes us wretch every time. It's the cleaning of them. You can empty your insides out if you don't clean them properly. going to India. She could say the crabs had made her ill and then she'd have to miss her plane. Not even Grant could be that devious. Here are, Mother. Your old chair. <laughs> Might as well be comfortable before you set off on those travels of yours. Oh, thanks, John. Aye. Here you are, Grant. <laughs> thanks, Fred. Marion. This is what I'm looking for. This is for you to keep forever. It's 
my shell that sings of the sea. Listen. Where's Kathleen? I'm here, Grant. For Kathleen, the city girl. <laughs> oh, Martin. This is yours now. You look after it, mind. Does it work? Sometimes. It's a bit like me. <laughs> ah, thanks, Gran. Where's Jeannie's present, Gran? Oh, Jeannie knows what her present is. Your father's taking it upstairs to your room. Come on, Jeannie, let's see what it is. Share my rings? But not this main stone one, though. Oh, Gran. Your university books. Mm. Are you pleased with your present, Jeannie? Oh, I am. I'll always treasure them. <laughs> Gran, I wish you weren't going. I should be quite at home in India, you know. I've got mountains there, too. Why so far, Gran? Why forever? People always think they know what's best for you. And they don't. You know that, Jeannie? The only harm you can do yourself is to waste your life. And you can do that if you don't listen to your own voice. It's a crime to waste your life. Do you think you've wasted your life? I know I have. It's dreadful to come to my age and say that. The trouble is you don't know it's happening till it's too late. Not if you're listening to other people instead of yourself. Don't let that happen to you, eh? You promise me that, Jeannie? You won't waste your life. And I did promise her. But how can I keep a promise like that? That's what I'd like to know. Felt as if I was saying goodbye to Gran then. You don't have to do it this way, Mother. I'd rather you stayed here with us, if you wanted it. upstairs with Gran. She's just sitting on her bed, holding her hand. What? Kath. I think Gran's crying. I 
never noticed how thin she'd gone. At you. She looked like a little girl crying in the night. Just as if she wanted her own mum to comfort her. Could you hear what they were saying? I think so. <laughs> Jeannie! Jeannie! This crab's really very nice. Won't you have some? Oh, no, thanks, Grant. Kathleen! I'm not going to say much. <laughs> We've not always seen eye to eye, Madge's mother and me. Wouldn't be natural if we did. But I've a lot to thank her for. I think she made my Madge the way she is. Cut above the rest, I'd say. So, this is it. I wish you well, Mother. Oh, well, <laughs> got a speech, man. Oh, I'm having a lovely time at my party. <laughs> That's what I want to say. And you know, it's better than being at your own funeral. Because you can hear all the nice things they're saying about you, and you can still tuck into all that growth. <laughs> <laughs> to Gran. To Gran. To Gran. Good luck, Mother. I saw that the game is over at last and that there isn't one of us who doesn't know by now that Gran isn't heading for India or for anywhere abroad for that matter but for the little hospice just outside town where the incurably sick go to die.
Well, that's all a bit sad, isn't it? But to cheer you up, I've got the old leather jacket on and I'll